how did you get into being a musician? I know you've been talented since the day I met you singing in the showers. <laughs> and now we're here years later. Mm. Things have amplified. Yeah. Where did the passion for the music come from? Well, that's quite uh that's quite a loaded question. So I mean, I'd like to start off by saying that I've always it's always run deep in the family. Um been singing since I was three, four years old, started off in the sort of classical you know, area, choirs and all that kind of stuff. Um, did you play an instrument back then? I did. I played the piano. Um, and like a lot of people my Love age, that. like a lot of people my age, I decided to quit it because I didn't think it was cool enough, which I regret. Um, That's the thing. Like when we were growing up, playing any instrument was like the nerdiest shit to do. But now it's like, damn, that swag. Yeah, well, um, yeah. I mean, where I went to school, I went to kind of a you know a posh school in London, and all they taught us was just the classical, you know, repertoire. And I I think that had they taught us, you know, some of the songs that we'd want to play, say like Queen, some Elton John, Billy Joel, I think I would have you know continued at it. But um, absolutely, I, I do. That's one of my, you know, small regrets is not not sticking to the piano. One thing I'll say, uh, I mean, this is piggybacking off of that point, mm. is in school, not only in the musical element, but across the board, especially in economics, they do not teach, um, or not, th this is a generalized statement, but overall, it's not emphasized to teach the modern practical practices. Uh, yeah, when it comes to music, they always try to start off, which with, they're hard you know, to teach because there's not as much research behind them. But yeah, uh, I don't know. I think everyone's taught differently. I just happen to be going to kind of a school where they valued Mozart the classics and all. Yeah, yeah, man. Oh my god, I was in the choir. You know, we were learning, you know, stuff by Beethoven, Vivaldi, like all the, you know. 14th century 15th 16th century kind of music. Mozart and Beethoven are Baroque, romantic classical music so and I think that was great up to a point right I think I would have been glad to um and happy to like learn you know stuff more along the lines of you know the stuff we're listening to now the stuff that our parents listen to absolutely uh, just to give you a different perspective on things and to give you you know the choice to either you know sing that classical stuff or to sing more contemporary stuff right they should expose or not they just in general every type of music should be thrown at you when you're young yeah and whichever one you gravitate towards to whichever one you feel more musically inclined to or talented towards right you pursue that yeah i mean so i mean my parents my parents sort of we were raised on classical music my dad you know you play any sort of classical piece and he can name you the movement the symphony within three seconds wait what's a movement I don't so, know this shit as a Texan. So, so, so certain there are symphonies and there are, you know, there are string quartet pieces. There, there's three movements or four movements. And like my right. dad is that skilled and knows that, you know, genre of music, if you want to call it that so well that you, he could play three, four seconds of a piece and he could tell you what it is. That's it's he's that. I remember waking up every day that I've spent the night with you or stayed at your estate. Yeah. Not your estate, but your lake house. Yeah. Ocean house. Panama. Shout out Panama. Shout out Panama. Um, your dad every morning, 8 a.m.? Yep. Before 8 a.m. I mean, that was our alarm clock. I know what you're going to say. I mean, no, he was up to classical music doing things. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And he would blast it. He had no regard for other people's ears. Which um, you shouldn't. No. And I mean, you should, because uh, that was our alarm clock for our entire... You know, hey, Mr. Mo I support I it. I support it. Yeah. Get your music blasting in the morning. <laughs> get everyone up. It's time to get to work, buddy. Yeah. But I will say this. Like, despite all the classical music that he listened to, he also did um, listen to Bob Dylan, Bruce Springsteen, Fleetwood Mac. Good men. The Bee Gees. Um, Love the Bee Gees. Yellow. And I actually thank uh, my parents for the kind of uh, the disc collection that they had because it's thanks to those kind of those kind of artists that, you know, it you know, sort of propelled me to think that maybe I could do the same. So Eric, when it comes down to musical inspiration, yes. Who is one artist who makes you feel like, Hey, I can do the same. I can do something similar that they did. They, they have paved the path 
for something that I am confident and fully capable of replicating? Who's given you that? Well, so to circle back to your your other question, it, it all really started to you know take shape senior year of uh, senior year of college, um, studying for my finals, and for the first time, I really started to listen to Oasis, The Strokes, Stone Roses. Yep, um, a legend, especially the song "Champagne Supernova," which I know I've mentioned a few times, and that I've was love that song since I was a sixth sixth grader. Well, so this is what what was crazy is that I growing up only really listened to songs that my parents would listen to, or songs that other people would listen to. I never really found my own kind of my own collection. <laughs> You never had your own iPod? Well, I did, but I, again, I would only like put on stuff that others would listen to, what was on the radio, what my, par- my parents would listen to. So it would only yeah. it only came about. Did you have LimeWire back in Britain? I did, yeah. Fucking love this. Love uh, this. Shout out LimeWire. Hope y'all are doing good. I think they got a lawsuit. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they lost a lot of money. But um, no, nah, uh, Champagne Supernova by Oasis. Waterfall by Stone Roses and Robbers by the 1975 were three songs that I listened to at the VMI library that um, I would argue changed my life for the better because it made me think, wow, I can write this kind of music. I love this kind of music. Um, and, and there you go. And then the whole idea of maybe going into finance and asset management, all these things went right out the window. And all I could think about from then on was I want to feel or I want to write songs that make others feel the way these songs make me feel. I couldn't, I couldn't agree more Pepe. And that's what I love Mm. because, you know, at the end of the day, even people who work for these finance jobs, real estate jobs, insurance jobs, shout out to all of our boys, but you all know who you are. You know, at the end of the day, you are trying to evoke an emotion to achieve a certain outcome. And, I feel like once you're able to boil down how you're able to make people happy and put a financial value on that service you can do to make them happy, that's when you've really hit it on the knuckle. Yeah. I mean, I can I can picture the moment right there. It was it was the music video of Champagne Supernova, and it was just a collection of and a mix of both the song. And the artistry in the music video that made me feel a certain kind of way that I never felt before. Even though I've right. you know, loved music since I was a kid, it was it was something almost tangible that which I was like, "Wow, I can do that." What what's like? What is this? I want to replicate this. Um, and and yeah, and then it was it was just a it was a. Th-